Hello and welcome students to another episode of History at Home. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the beginnings of Homo sapiens and the first human that we have a fossil record of, Homo 1. Before we get into this information, just a reminder on your Cornell notes, in the top box that says topic, please write in Homo 1 and the out of Africa theory. Um, that is kind of the topic of conversation in this video. And secondly, when you see this pause button appear in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, that is your cue to take notes on the information that you hear and see in this video. Okay, so one of these really big life questions, important life questions, is where did life come from? And people have been pondering the answer to this question for millennia. Some people approach this question by using a religious lens, um, specifically the three major monotheistic religions of Islam, Christianity, Christianity, and Judaism. They all believe that the first symptoms of human life were created by God or Allah, and that first person was Adam. Perhaps you ponder this question using a philosophical lens. And there is a famous philosopher by the name of Rene Descartes. He wondered about life in general, and he came to the conclusion that you cannot be positive that anything around you even exists except for yourself. He wrote down a famous quote in his book, Meditations, I think, therefore I am, which means that you can only be 100% sure that you yourself exist and you cannot be uh, sure that anything else around you exists outside of yourself. Lastly, perhaps you're trying to answer this question using a scientific lens. And there's a cool scientific theory known as panspermia. Panspermia argues that possibly life originated on this planet from another planet. And the way this theory kind of explains this idea is that somewhere else distantly in the universe was a planet that had life and a very large meteorite violently collided with that planet. In this collision, rocks with simple living organisms were ejected into space. Um, those simple organisms survived the harsh vacuum of space and eventually collided with our planet. Um, from there, they survived that impact and evolved from single basic cell life forms into the complex life that we have today over about 4.5 billion years. Um, if this idea is actually true, what that would mean for us is that we're all aliens, which is really kind of a crazy thought. Um, ultimately, we don't have an answer to this question yet as to where life came from. But in our class, we're going to look at the archaeological evidence, and we're going to look at fossil records and artifacts to help us try to answer this ultimate question. Um, fossils and artifacts are two distinct and separate things. Fossils are the naturally preserved remains of animals or plants, things like dinosaur skeletons and footprints. Artifacts, on the other hand, are man-made objects, things that humans made, such as tools, weapons, musical instruments, jewelry, etc. So fossils are things that are naturally preserved by Mother Nature, whereas artifacts are things that humans crafted and made. And using these two items, here's what we know about the creation of life on this planet. Um, Homo sapiens or humans, that is the Latin phrase for humans, evolved on Earth and have been evolving on Earth for at least the last 195,000 years. Um, based on where we found the oldest human, which is Homo 1, we believe that life first evolved in Africa and more specifically within the modern day country of Ethiopia. Um, we also know, based on what we have found, that the first humans were nomadic, meaning they wandered from place to place following different food sources and the seasons, and they lived very simple and basic lives as hunter-gatherers, um, meaning they got their food by A, either hunting their food, or B, gathering edible plants uh, and finding already dead animals. They did not know how to farm. In fact, agriculture is a very recent discovery in human history, only discovered within the last 12,000 years. So here's a map of modern day Ethiopia. And down here is where we found Omo 1, or the remains of Omo 1, in that lower Omo Valley. Um, they were found by archaeologist Richard Leakey between 1967 and 1974 CE. Um, and when he was uncovering these fossil remains, he didn't find an entire complete skeleton of Oma 1. Rather, he just found bits and pieces of the skull, jaw, teeth, and legs. And here is ultimately the entirety of what he found. Again, not a complete skeleton. It doesn't include every fossilized bone, um, but rather just bits and pieces. And then from there, we could use those bits and pieces to reconstruct the skeleton 
of OMA1. Um, these fossils, when they were dated, were found to be around 195,000 years old, making them the oldest human remains ever found. And they were named OMO1 because they were found in the banks of the lower OMO Valley. So they were found right around here. Richard Leakey found them in the lower OMO River. So they were named OMO1 in honor of that location and the number one because they are the oldest human remains that we have found so far. Continuing. When we kind of superimpose the fossil remains, specifically the skull remains that we found of OMA1, um, we can see that they are distinctively human. And the good thing about the human anatomy is that it is symmetrical. So if you can find a bone on one side of the body, it would look exactly the same on the other side of the skeleton. So when we kind of superimpose these fossils onto a modern day human skull, we can see that the pieces fit just like a puzzle. And we can tell it is distinctively human for a couple different reasons. First, the brain size. The human brain is huge compared to other primates, much, much larger than other primates like chimps. The brow size is much smaller than other primates. We also have a forehead, which is unique to humans and not other primates. We have a chin, again, a unique human characteristic, and overall, a relatively flat face compared to other primates. So without a doubt, these fossil remains from OMA1 were a Homo sapien. So OMA1 is the oldest at the moment Homo sapien that we have on record. Um, he was definitely nomadic, meaning he did not have a permanent home. Again, he would kind of migrate based on the seasons and the available food sources that he could find. He was a hunter-gatherer, meaning he got his food by hunting animals or scavenging already dead animals and gathering edible plant life. He did not know how to farm food. Again, farming is a recent discovery found within the last 12,000 years. And some personal information on OMA1, he was a male. We can tell that based on his pelvis or his hips. Um, he was around five foot nine. He weighed around 160 pounds, and he died somewhere between his mid to late 20s. Uh, we can tell by how developed his bones are that he was still relatively young when he died. Uh, this is a recreation of what OMA1 may have looked like. We don't know exactly what he looked like. We don't know if he painted his face or his body, but just a modern day depiction of OMA1, and we'll be watching this documentary in class. Um, we can also kind of start piecing together the uh, pieces that we have found throughout the world. And we developed a theory called out of Africa. And this is a theory that suggests that modern humans evolved um, in Africa and then from there simply walked out of the continent of Africa and populated the other six continents. Uh, specifically, we believe humans evolved in Ethiopia. And because of this, Africa has the nickname the cradle of humanity. And ultimately for us today, I think it's important to point towards this, this information. Um, from OMA1, we can see, based on different genetic testing, that all humans can trace their roots and heritage back to Africa, and all humans are related. So here is the out of Africa theory in action. So humans first evolved somewhere down here in modern day Ethiopia, and simply over hundreds of thousands of years walked up and across the Sinai Peninsula and out of Africa, some went to Europe, some moved into Asia, and others simply just stayed in Africa. And now that we have humans living in different pockets, separated by thousands of miles across the world, we start to see humans change physically. So we start to see superficial differences like skin color, hair color, and eye color, based on where your ancestors at one point in their history moved throughout the world. Um, here's the out of Africa theory in action. We can see about 100,000 years ago, humans first left Africa. Around 40,000 years ago, got to Europe. And only within the last 12,000 years or so, made it into the Americas in the Western Hemisphere. The way they got into the Americas is because they migrated during the Ice Age. So during the Ice Age, we had these large polar caps across the Northern Hemisphere. Humans could then simply walk from Russia into Alaska and there down into the Americas. So... The Ice Age between 110 and 12,000 years ago allowed humans to migrate from Russia to Alaska, from Asia to Australia, and from China to Japan. So here are some things to keep in mind about this video. Um, humans first emerged on this planet around 195,000 years ago. Humans first appeared in Africa and then spread throughout the world over about 200,000 years. That's the out of Africa theory. And for the moment, OMA1 is the oldest Homo sapien that we have a record of. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.